the easy thing. So a lot of times what happens is because the echo probe is kept on the hard surface or the skin. So there's a lot of distance between the echo probe and of course the heart movement as well. So a lot of times it, it will be happening is or if someone is really obese <coughs> or you want to rule out LA thrombus, left atrial appendage thrombus as well, whenever you are planning a cardioversion for such kind of patients as well. So it's very important that you go to that area, you try to have a look as well over there for anything like this. And then, so that's why, so you try to put up a echocardiographic probe, which is called as through the mouth, it goes into the esophagus and it will be lying literally, so if this is the heart, if this is the heart, so literally your esophageal probe is just behind it, so literally, this this is the finger, so it, it the probe will be over here. So you try to see, and as I had said, a lot of indications are there. So what are some of those important indications over here, which we can see it? If you are trying to rule out a cardiac or aortic source of emboli, otherwise if there is some congenital heart disease, intracardiac shunts or endocarditis, or even if the patient has some cardiac tumors or masses, aortic diseases as well, or if the patient has some valvular prosthesis malfunction, or as I said it for the cardioversion or sometimes even for the ablation as well, we, we need to see. But right now, there has been slight modification in the indications regarding the ablation setting. So what they have said it, if the patient is already on no acts, regularly taking it without any stopping, continuous no acts, then no need for T at all. So that's something important to change. Anyways, otherwise you are not able to get adequate transthoracic echo images Otherwise, you want to correct the position of the IABB. And you also want to examine the mitral valve pre and post repair. Similarly, intraoperative evaluation as well, when your procedure is going on, you want to see how is it happening to the valves. So that is the other time as well you can try to go through it actually. So now, what about the contraindications? When you should not be doing any transesophageal echo. So absolute contraindication is if there's an uncooperative, unwilling patient, you should not. The will or the consent of the patient is always the first priority. That is an important factor. Then similarly, if the patient has esophageal obstruction or esophageal diverticulum or the patient has perforated viscous, or even re recent esophageal or gastric surgery, or there is instability of the cervical spine or the patient has had active upper GI bleed actually. So there are some similarly like all the fields there are some relative contraindications as well. So which you can already see over here as well. So like severe cervical arthritis, non-bleeding esophageal varices or significant oropharyngeal distortion, severe cardiopulmonary distress, or extreme oropharyngeal muscle weakness, or severe coagulopathy. So in these conditions, what happens is you need to assess those patients. If everything is fine, you can think, you need to always weigh the clinical outcomes. Is more beneficial or, you know, some problems are going to be there. So that's why it is called as relative. So these are not absolute, but relative contraindications. So you, you have to think about it. What could be the possible consequences as well? What are the benefits for the patient? And accordingly, then you can try to proceed further. And yes, it's not without any complications. There are some problems. We have come across some of the patients as well who have developed some complications as well. Complications can be really difficult to manage. Some of those patients can easily be injury of those areas as well. Uh, any of these areas, whichever is there in the neighborhood, the dental injury, parotid glands, swelling can be there. Upper GI bleeding or hematemesis can also be present. Or dysphagia, vocal cord injury or hypertension or vomiting aspiration 
or even sometimes aortic dissection or methemoglobinemia also can happen according to all these patients. So one must be careful while trying to manipulate this TEE probe as well. So whenever you are trying to do a TEE, what are the important things you need to keep in mind? So any dosage, whatever you are trying to use for sedation, you should also have an antidote as well for that. So what are the antidotes? For morphine, you have naloxone. Okay, for benzodiazepines, how do you use? Flumazenil. Similarly, if the patient develops methoglobinemia, what do you use? You use is methylene blue in 1 mg per kg, 1% solution. And it should be given over 5 minutes. But it has its own maximum dosage as well. And the maximum total dosage is 7 mg per kg. So routine we approach. So what are the things what you try to do? Is and there are some recommended views as well. So initially, what you always try to do is you try to obtain a cross view without color, Doppler, and magnification. Then place the color Doppler over the individual structure, and then you may switch on the Doppler jets. Okay. Sometimes you may magnify those images as well. Magnify them to view a little bit better. Whenever it is, everything is fine, you have observed it well, you can go to the next view. As we had said in the trans thoracic view as well, so similarly, transesophageal echo has its own different views as well. So, how do you go? In the mid esophageal aortic valve, short axis and long axis view. Similarly, upper esophageal ascending aortic, short axis, long axis. Then uh, the aortic arch short axis long axis then descending aortic short axis and long axis finally the descending aortic short axis view and the long axis view so you should be able to know so whenever you are trying to put up a transesophageal probe so what happens you can move it left you can move it to the right and you can of course withdraw and advance the probe as well so these are those four things how do you manipulate the TEE probe? So this is very important. Whenever you're trying to get a good image, good quality image, you should be able to do all those maneuvers and then you'll be able to do. And now, even for the movement as well. So what happens is for this movement, you can rotate it forward, you can rotate it backward as well. Okay, and you can anti-flex, retroflex. So these are these movements. What are the zones in which you can try to use? Um, so in this images, this images are very important. Uh, and whenever you are trying to visualize any kind of anatomy as well, that's why the way in which you are able to manipulate the TE probe makes one of the biggest differences. So this is how a TE probe, uh, the view you are going to get initially if you are going to put it inside and with time i think uh, what is going to happen is don't worry about all these theoretical things these things will become more and more better to you when you are going to do more and more cases initially try to absorb observe at least i would say 10 to 15 cases then try to assist in some of the cases and you will be gaining more confidence and then you can proceed further so in this as you can see in this uh, diagram which view is it can anyone guess which view is it? So this is the, so you can, you should try to see in the terms of esophagus. So it is in almost in the middle level of the esophagus. And what is the area which you are seeing over here? The right ventricular inflow outflow view. So that's why this view is called as mid esophageal RV inflow outflow view. Okay. So there are a lot of planes as well. So this is how you try to insert for a patient. So you have already put up a bite guard. You have put some lubricating jelly as well on the TE probe. And then you have to be really gentle. You have to be. And now for the simply, um, I mean, simpliness and for the help of everyone in this slide itself, I have tried to put all those different views in a single figure. And as I said it, try to go through it again and again 
whenever you are trying to do a TE as well, you, tr you should try to correlate which view is it, where is it, what I'm trying to view, am I trying to miss something, what are the possible consequences for that and that's what is going to be very very helpful for you. So now these slide as well similarly it shows the other uh, views as well and what do you see, how do you see, what are the different areas. So first thing is step by step you should try to proceed. Proceed in the sense first try to get really good with the transthoracic echo. If you are going to good with that your eyes will be adjusted to the views, what are those structures and then you can go for the tra transesophageal echo. I wouldn't recommend directly going for the TE images. So then you'll be getting an idea what to look out for in what views, how do you proceed as well. So this is another important slide as well. I really want you guys to be thorough with those views in fact. So what do we see in this image? What do we see? Anyone wants to comment? <laughs> I guess it's uh, becoming a little bit difficult, but don't worry. Uh, I won't take much of time. So what do we see over here? So we can see over here at least uh, at same level, right? So so where is the T probe possibly? It is in the mid-esophageal two-chamber view, okay? But you will have to keep on going around in different, different planes. So different planes, how do you go? Those You will have to keep on changing these angles, which you can see from here, 60 to 90 degree. And then you will be seeing everything in all. And then you can also try to see for the left ventricular diameter as well. And this is, I think, I hope everyone remembers from the transthoracic echo what we had said, how or where to take those measurements. Same way, this view as well. So these are the different views you have to go through. What do you notice? How do you notice? You must be able to tell about those findings as well. And these are the RV dimensions. One, two, three. Similar, these dimensions are very important if you're planning up a surgery, you have a planning of intervention or anything as well. So I'm just trying to give you a little overview of what needs to be done. I'm not going to really, you know, bore you guys enough. Okay? So these are the images. I would really suggest you guys just go through all these presentations. What are the different views? This anatomy is very important in the sense, especially for the mitral valve repairs or surgeries, no? They'll be telling literally M1, M2, A1, A2, A3 or A0. So you should be able to know which are those areas, how they have taken it, which view was used. So it will be very, very helpful for you. So that's why I was telling no, A1, A2, A3, P1, P2, P3. Which segment has to be targeted? Which area has to be uh, attempted for, for what kind of surgery? So that's why I'm showing you just these images, just to give you a little bit uh, overview. I don't want you guys to really go too much deep into it. But believe me, as I said it, if once you will be through the transparacic echo, it will be done. So now we are at the end of the session. 